Sean with UFA. Hey, Robbie with UFA. Chad as well. And uh, this is uh, week five of Recruit Camp 5-4. Long right? five weeks, yeah. Long five weeks. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Theme of this week's firefighter survival. It's uh, It's been an awesome week. A lot of physical physical work on the training grounds. Window bailouts, ladder bailouts, RIT, Maydays. Uh, it's been an awesome week. Yep. Uh, they've, they've gotten to work on air management again. Uh, work on victim removal. Uh, searching for those victims and also searching for downed firefighters. So, but, uh, like I said last week, if they thought last week was rough, uh, this week was just a step up from that. What do you got? I like what you said there, Sean. Yeah. Rough. Is it tough? <laughs> it's where we got to get the grits out. We got to start working hard, and then we keep saying it's a grinder, and every week it just gets better. But I did space one thing in the beginning. What's that? Sponsor, dude. We do have a sponsor this sponsor. week. Sponsor. This week's video is brought to you by Madison. Me! So if you weren't aware, Madison is the glue that holds this operation together. She's the boss. She's the boss. I will be supporting this week's video. Four diamonds! Push them back, four! Hi, I'm Molly here again with Camp 54, and we just finished our morning workout. So every morning, uh, the first thing that we have these guys do is PT. PT starts at 7, and every day it's something a little different. So for a lot today, we did um, a deck of cards workout. So we just have a deck of cards, and every time we flip something over, it's a surprise what we're going to get. So we had planks, so if you get like a two of spades, it's two times 10, so it's a 20 second plank. Uh, mommy kicks, heels to heaven, that's an ab workout. Push up jacks, burpees, everybody's favorite. Hindu squats, um, and then when you, when you get an ace, it's all three of these together, so it's 10, 20, 20. Um, this is a workout that we do a few times during the camp just because it's really easy to do with a large group. And it's Wednesday today, and so we had all 33 recruits here. So we had them all spread out in here and we're able to go around the circle through a deck of cards one and a half times-ish. Um, for a lot of these guys, the PT that we have every morning is the hardest thing that they have ever done physical fitness-wise. Um, even those that were expecting a difficult PT regimen are even caught off guard. Um, we haven't had as many people puking over the last couple weeks as we did the first couple, but that's great and just showing that they're getting in better physical fitness um, we try to work them out super hard, but also try not to kill them if we're going to have a busy day on the grounds. Um, we might do a slightly less intense PT that morning just so that they're able to be on their game um, for running evolutions all day or dragon hose all day. Uh, we do, Captain Dinkle comes up with most of our workouts. I'm pretty sure he just wakes up from a nightmare and writes down whatever it is that he came up with and comes up with some great workouts with some great names. Um, we've got like the Hurricane, Kamikaze, Leonidas, all sorts of exciting and fear-inducing names. Um, so for these guys, I told them the other day that before they became firefighters, if they chose to slack on their workout, the only person they were shortchanging was themselves. But um, now that they're firefighters, if they decide to slack on their workout, they are letting down their crew, they're letting down the public that they have will eventually take an oath to serve and that they no longer have the luxury of being out of shape. So I think a lot of them took that to heart and we've seen the intensity step up and it's great to see these guys getting in better shape. We have before and after pictures that would be great to show um, hopefully week 16. So we've got their before pictures and it's amazing to see not just the physical change but the way they carry themselves um, that also comes across in those shots. So I know a lot of them have already lost, a couple people have lost close to 20 pounds already which is amazing. and. Um, you can actually see them starting to get a lot more muscle on them too. So we're excited to see how they go. Um, we got another, gosh, 12 more weeks to go. So we'll see how they are at the end, but things are looking good.
come to our window, uh, do our munter hitch onto, onto our carabiner, which is, which is attached to our class two harness, throw our rope bag out, we see our, our distance, and then we'll, we'll talk about going over the edge, body positioning, and, and we, can, we can repel ourselves out safely, get the heck out of this environment. So today the recruits are having an opportunity um, in learning some, some basic firefighter survival skills. Um, this is last resort type of stuff. Uh, they get into a bad situation. Um, they've got a bell out of a second story, third story, fourth story building. Um, this is their life on the line. Uh, they have to create a, a solid anchor point, use what they have, a drop bag, uh, an escape system, and, and get out safely. Get down to the ground so that they can go home to their families. Okay, okay. so go ahead. We're gonna tie off, we're gonna get our munter in. Okay, good. Nice, good work. Clip in, tighten out, okay. So remember, you, don't, you wanna have just enough length that you'll be able to get that, that carabiner up over the ledge. You wanna keep your hands free of that so you don't get your hands or any of your equipment caught in that. Once your body weight kinda tightens that out and shocks that out on you, right? So you don't get anything caught into that. And this hand is always gonna be minding that tool. That's, if you're gonna put it into the sill or whatever, that hand always minds that tool. That leg hooks inside the seal so you can keep yourself really low and you get less of a shock out on that rope without pulling anything out. So let's go ahead, get over the seal. You're good. Gotta get your rope back out, right? Just behind you, just it's fine. Just reach around behind you. You won't have to worry about that. It should be fine. Get your rope back out. Okay, now we know we hit the ground, so now we can get all the way to the ground with this instead of hanging like a pinata, right? Yes, sir. Alright, over. Good. Lay on the leg. Okay, good. So get that hand. If you're holding that tool in, get that arm and that elbow out of 90. Get this leg hooked there. Yep. And you start to go over. Keep that right hand on that rope at all times. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Get it out until it tightens out on you. Keep your hands out of the rope. Good. Okay, now lean back a little bit. Walk that out. Okay, get your feet on the wall and walk down. You want to stop. You pull up on it. It'll hold you. You want to go down, just let it release. Just keep yourself a good distance in between that rope when it's sliding through those beams. Okay, on the way down. Good. Good. Just setting up, making sure these guys are prepped for success. Fire copies, engine 191 responding to a dumpster fire at 8220 West, 4100 South. It is in a vacant lot. Fully involved. My session's good. Hey, it's Chad Pay with Unified Fire Training Division. We're out with Recruit Class 5-4, doing dumpster fires today. We've been running through a bunch of scenarios as pulling hose through a building, but to be able to deploy it in the outdoors for a dumpster where they're threatening a structure or out by itself, we want them to approach it tactically, tactically, and also uh, safely as well. So we're teaching them how to deploy, where to place the engine, deploy effectively, uh, approach it as it's a ticking time bomb in reality we just don't know what are in dumpsters these days uh, go off of uh, fog nozzles using fog patterns straight streams uh, the whole gamut when it comes to dumpster fires but in reality the main thing we're wanting to hit home is the safety just because the dangers behind dumpster fires we've got each company going through an evolution pulling the hose putting in pumps we're building on those blocks we've talked about in the beginning of some of the videos where we're just trying to uh, focus on each individual skill and so they're running through this as a company. It's good to see them getting out and getting after it. Alright, good afternoon. Captain Dustin Nickel, back again. Here we are uh, working on some uh, some skills here for carries and drags for these uh, individuals here in camp. Uh, we're teaching them the importance of carries and drags being uh, getting a downed firefighter out or getting a person out. So. As you can see over here, they're in their, uh, they're in all their gear right now, air packs, um, full turnouts, all that good stuff to show how heavy um, a person can be to get these folks out. But we're teaching them different techniques, different methods to be able to wrap them up with their webbing, ropes, or whatever they have to be able to drag a firefighter out, you know, being on the average of about 200 pounds or so, um, even more with some of these bigger fellas with all their, uh, with all their gear on and to show them the importance of, of what it's going to take when you've got to drag somebody out 
and we're doing it out here in, a, in an open building with, with, with an environment that's clean where we put them in a, a smoky environment that can even get a little bit uh, a little bit more hectic for them as far as being in you know hot heat gas and all that stuff and then finding uh, the right methods to get an individual out of I guess a building, uh, whether it's a stairwell, whether they're trapped or anything like that. So the importance to know, um, it's very meticulous, but it's very, very important to know um, what that feels like to them. So if they ever have to do that at any time in their job, they know how to do that. Leave that chilling. No, you're good. Look. Now, now, now just secure it all. Fine. Whether it's, going whether it's just that little half hitch there, yeah. water, or whatever. Right? Okay, secure. good. It's secure. Yeah. Move yeah. compel. Move Capel right now with a sense of purpose out of here. And find the down firefighter, okay? okay? And you guys will work as a team to get the firefighter out, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, when you find the victim, radio, radio command, let them know that you found them, and um, exit the structure accordingly. Copy? Yes, sir. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Command copies mayday. Go ahead with your emergency traffic. This is engine 251 Bravo. I'm on fire attack. I become pinned. My conditions are high heat, low visibility. I'm unable to reach my pass device, so I'm unsure where my air is at currently. My position is the nozzle, and my escape plan is to wait here, conserve air. Two fifty one Bravo, we copy your mayday. Rip team's activated, they're heading towards you on the hose line. Stay put. Okay, so everyone heard what's going on. We have a firefighter stuck, he's pinned. We don't know what his air is. He has low visibility and he's stuck on the hose line, he's gonna stay in place. Let's go in and go grab him. Copy. We know that he's on fire attack, right? Yes sir. So where do you think his position is? With the hose, at the nozzle. At the end of the hose line, right? Yes sir. Okay. Be loud! 192. We are still attempting to locate down firefighters. We have high, low visibility. Go. Our air is at 2700 meters. I see copies. Any needs? No, she's at 55. I see copies. When you reach down firefighter. Go ahead, for IC. We have found down firefighter on the third level. We are trying to make contact with him. He's been caught at this time. We have high feet low risk. We are going to attempt to pull him out from the hose line. Okay, so an option is if you guys are getting so fatigued pulling him out, you can rotate each other through, right? That's why we have a four-man crew. Because it's going to be very difficult. What was the statistic on how many firefighters it takes to get one out? Twelve to one. Twelve, Twelve to one, right? That's a lot. There's only four of you. We're just simulating here, and we're not going a long distance. But That's... if two of you try to do it on your own, it's going to be very difficult, right? So. If you guys need to rotate through, then you can. If you're in a position where you can't rotate them out, then that is what it is. You just got to do do the best that you can do. I think you guys did a great job. You guys got up to me. You had you you tried, didn't work, didn't work. Then you thought about it. You took a second. I heard you two communicating. That was awesome. You're like, how do we get him out of here? Because that's what you got to do, right? And you got it done. So you guys did a great job. I liked it. Okay, here's the plan. We're gonna get you down on the hose line. You're gonna orient yourself on the hose. Okay, start searching, find your cupping, and get yourself out of the structure. Understood? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna spin you around this way. Stop. Walk forward. Spin the other way. Stop. Come to me. Go on there. Find the hose. Right in front of you. There you go, reach out. Okay. Start getting out of the structure. Okay, what do you find? Okay, walk me through your 
drop this figure. Here we go. Walk me through what happened. Um, so it was a search. I was following the hose line, and uh, I got to a point where there was a structural collapse, and I was stuck underneath. I called for a mayday and let the RIT team know my current position, um, and then fought to kind of stabilize my gear and make sure that I was in a situation to be able to okay, breathe and get out safely. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Man, copies made it. Go ahead and submerge the traffic. Man, 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 man. That's a one night three. Probably. I've hit a collapse. Oh. First order of business for the day. Elbrick? Yes, sir. Up to the front, please. Tippets? Okay, so we uh, pulled everybody in, right? Interviewed you, talked to you about class officer position. Okay, we had a lot of good conversations. Um, actually learned a lot about who you guys are as recruits. Um, but a decision had to be made, right? Okay. So, decision's been made. You're looking at your class officers for Camp 5-4. Good with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So am I. You? Good with it. Uh, Congratulations to you. Thank you, sir. Congrats, brother. Thank you, sir. This better be straight at all times. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's hear it for him. My name is Jordan Tippetts. I've grown up in Utah my whole life. I have a wife and an 18 month old son. I also have another son on the way. He'll be due three days after we graduate. You know, the reason why I chose the fire service is because anytime I saw firefighters, anytime I saw a fire truck driving down the road, just growing up, I felt a sense of pride. You know, I felt a burning inside of me that it was what I needed to do. And I love serving the community and helping people out. And I didn't think there was any other better option. And I know that this position was made for me. I've been growing and developing and learning a ton of new skills. You know, it's been hard for my wife being away four days a week, but I know she knows that this is the job for me. So she's excited for me. She's happy for me. She loves to know that I'm giving it my all. You know, even though the days are long and I can tell that she's stressed. She knows that in the long run, this will be an amazing experience for my family and that we will all learn and grow from it. Being in the fire service and being with UFA, I just want to see myself grow. I want to continue to push myself. It's been a huge growing opportunity and you know, like they say, you don't want to stay comfortable and it definitely pushes you out of your comfort zone and you can grow extremely quick. You know, these short five weeks I've seen myself turn into a different husband, a different father, someone that wants to be an example for my wife and son. I want to be there and have them see me and be proud of me and the work that I've done. And, you know, that's how I live my life. I want to make my family proud. I want to make my wife proud. And I want to be a hero for my son. My name is Mark Hickey, I'm 25 years old. Uh, I've lived out in Utah for seven years now. I grew up in Las Vegas, lived most of my life out there, and then uh, got an academic scholarship to the U. So uh, while I was in college, um, working out at the fitness was like a huge part
part of my life. Uh, I was always at the gym and I met up with some people there uh, and they were on the cheer team. I always thought it was easy. So they invited me to come out, try out, and uh, never done it a day in my life. Day one of tryouts, showed up and it was hard. It was one of the hardest things physically that I've done and uh, gave it my best shot. The uh, coaches liked what they saw, so I made it on the team, just worked hard over the summer, improved myself, and got a, a finalized position on the team. I didn't know how far it would take me. Um, I had the opportunity to become captain of the cheer team, right on to a new experience with firefighting, and it's, it's going to be just as amazing, and I can't wait to see where it takes me. Parallels between cheer and fire have to be uh, just teamwork. You're working with these people um, every day. Um, and it's, it's not the same, but it's similar. We would practice every week so that when it came game time, we had, we had our performance ready. We were there to hype up the crowd and get them excited about the game. And we'd practice all week just for that one game. And even, even for the whole season, we would do that. And here it's the same thing. Here in recruit camp, and even after recruit camp, it's all about training and becoming your best so that when you're needed, when the community needs you, you're ready to perform. And you become best friends with that team and you become best friends with your crew here. My name's Maddie. Uh, I work out in the fire training division um, as an admin coordinator. Um, I am this week's sponsor. So um, just a little bit about me. Um, I've been in this position for about seven years. This is my eighth camp that I have been supporting administratively. Um, we just ran the totals and we've, counting these recruits that are going through right now, I will have supported 155 people, which is about a third of our department right now with the firefighters out in the field. Um, it's really fun. I love being out here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, I love the guys that I work for, Captain Dinkle and Specialist Garrett and Anderson and Chief Watkins. They're, they're awesome. They're like my family. I love getting to know the recruits um, and when they come back and then watching them go through the career, it's just been awesome. I just got married a year and a half ago. My husband's name is Graham. Um, We've been dating for about 10 years and finally we did the thing and got married. Um, no kids yet, but hopefully that will happen for us soon. I'm super glad that you're all here and following along and it's been really fun to get to see all these guys go through it. So, yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's Sean with UFA Fire Training, and uh, this is our last day of week five. So we're just, uh, hope you're liking the video. Make sure, check us out on YouTube, Instagram, subscribe. Uh, week six is just going to be bringing a lot more surprises. So that get ready is. to get at it. That it is. It's been a long grinder. I'm, I'm exhausted again. I'm tired. But uh, we got a three-day weekend. We'll turn around, hit it again, and, and get after week six. I'm excited to see what's coming. Yeah, weather's getting better. They're getting stronger. T-shirt time! They're getting stronger, they're getting faster. Oh yeah. And they're getting smarter. Yep. We'll see you next week. All right. Hey, Chance, Chance could you uh, position that chair? <laughs> Gentle, gentle, gentle. Oh, hell, I hate to see no you actually lifting normal patients. <laughs> <laughs> Preference on, on beverage. There we go. That was so awkward. <laughs>